there, STEM enthusiasts! Welcome back to Cameron's Lab, Dive In, the go-to podcast for STEM students. Craft it with passion by one of your own. I'm Cameron, your enthusiastic and ever-curious host. Buckle up for today's insightful episode. Ready to dive in? Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Cameron's Lab. Today, I am here with Giovanna. I am super excited to have her today because I don't know if you saw before, but we had another collaboration over on her page where I helped to write an article about um, women in biomedical engineering and then also just a little bit about myself. So if you haven't looked at that already, please be sure to do so. Um, and then I'm just going to give you a quick introduction to her because I feel like she is one of the most amazing people, absolutely supportive and just really, really cool. So she is a currently a master's student at King College studying um, stem cells and regenerative therapies. She actually graduated from Queen Mary University, which is where I'm studying at the moment. And she did that for biology. She is the founder for Scientia News, which is this just amazing community of different volunteers and all working together to create this large news platform where it's basically just breaking down um, research articles that make it easier for us to understand. Super excited to have you. Thank, Thank you for you joining for me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay. So can we talk about your journey into this like study for your master's of regenerative therapies and then stem cells? So how did you get into it and what really inspired you? So when I was in school um, during GCSE and my IB, when I was studying IB as well, um, our teachers like mentioned about stem cells, but they never went into much detail about oh, like like, how, like the applications of stem cells. Like we knew what it was about, and I sort of had like a little light bulb mo moment when they were like, "You can t change it into a different type of cell, but that means you can you know try and cure diseases or like repair tissues." Um, and then when I was I think, yeah, when I'd started IB, um, I went to a couple of talks and I met Dr. Emily Grossman, who's a science communicator, and she talked about um, regenerative therapies. And there was a famous, um, there was a famous topic that went around in 1997 um, called the Vacanti Mouse, I don't know if you heard it, or the Ear Mouse, um, where I think researchers in America, they put cartilage cells in the mouse and like an ear shape like came out of the back of the, the oh, mouth that's cool. yeah so that was a whole controversial topic about it mm. but I think that was like sort of the start of regenerative medicine mm. um, and I also got to meet Dr Robert Winston um, who um, did research in IVF studies mm. and he also wants to try and use embryonic stem cells in reproductive diseases mm. um, so those like small small things mm. were something I was very very interested in and so when I came into Queen Mary again they mentioned it very briefly about mm stem cells and also it was a very interested in medicine as well so it's quite interesting to like put those two together so doing this master's has like been very interesting and I'm glad I'm doing like that topic it's yeah. fascinating I yeah. think it's, it's really interesting how like just listening to little things in class can yeah. really like spark your interest exactly exactly <laughs> especially if they don't go farther into it and you're just there like uh, hello. yeah exactly <laughs> what about the rest <laughs> what about the rest of it I want to know more um so just based on that so now you're doing um just continuing your studies and also you're graduating soon, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, so now that you're graduating, what are some insights that you might be able to provide just like into the master's program at King? So my master's program is called Stem Cells and Regenerative Therapies from Bench to Market. So we're not just learning like the science side of it, like in the lab, but we're also learning about the commercialization um, and how like investors would like buy into the technology. So learning all those different aspects not just science but the business aspect is very like eye-opening because we don't always just have to learn about like being in the lab all the time like there's other opportunities like consultancy analysts um so I feel like that course is like a massive like all-rounder mm -hmm. so yeah definitely yeah I think it's cool as well that you get to do the business side of that because yeah, most exactly. of the time they're just like oh yeah you could sell that when you guys yeah, graduate but exactly. they never tell us how exactly so it's nice that yeah. you get that, that so, side. yeah we even had like a module where we had to do presentations on different topics so we had to talk about products that weren't able to be like commercialized if there were controversies um and understanding like profit like how much did the company make from that and we met um someone from AstraZeneca who came and talked about oh. the commercialization of cellular therapy so, cool. so it's quite cool <laughs> yeah. yeah so um I just wanted to go back to what you mentioned before so like with the tissue engineering and stem cells like yeah. what you mentioned it was like a high level of what your teachers give and that was the same for myself yeah but nobody really goes deep into it so mm. it'll give you that really like substantial information to keep you interested yeah why do you think that is like why does nobody really dive deep into it um I don't know I think like for me for example I think especially at the time so when I started my master's my professor actually told me like back then and he was mm. like 
early 2000s or 1990s, he said that when he had done his course and PhD and he was trying to find jobs in stem cells, not many people were talking about it then still. Mm -hmm. And so even he said like he was working companies for stem cells, but then they got bankrupt mm -hmm. because at that time it just wasn't popular. Mm -hmm. And because there's a lot of controversies around stem cells, mm. I feel like people are scared to like bring it up more. Mm. But I feel like now in future, I think regenerative medicine is going to actually be very, very important. Yeah, definitely. Um, which is why I think that, I mean, I hope now that people in school are actually learning about tissue engineering and stem cells because I feel like that is a very important topic. 100%. Yeah. From my like basic knowledge <laughs> of tissue engineering, we did a course on it just last semester, actually. Yeah. So that was one of my first, I guess, like, deep dives, like I said, yeah. into tissue engineering and then regenerative medicine. And it was really cool. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> so I think like students would really be interested in learning a bit more about that yeah. early on. So despite like the controversies and all of the things, I feel like the earlier you introduce people to it, the, the much the yeah. better it is. And I feel like with especially stem cells and regenerative therapies, you're actually combining science mm -hmm. and engineering yeah. as well. So it can open up, you know, more paths for mm -hmm. students as well. So I feel like that should be like talked about mm -hmm. much more. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. And then um, were there any, I guess, like, other, I know you mentioned like the business side, but back to the science side of your degree, mm -hmm. were there any like key topics or key skills that you've found that you've learned? Um, in terms of my course itself, most of it's more like doing journal clubs and, you know, talking as well, because mm -hmm. I think our main like project in terms of this course is, you know, um, get, getting investors to buy the product. Mm -hmm. So I feel like in terms of, the master's course I've done more about like talking in front of people um presenting work rather than just doing like the actual science like research side of it mm -hmm. but it's also very interesting to learn new diseases like mm -hmm. rare diseases because our professors say like a lot of doctors they don't know much about the rare diseases because mm -hmm. there's not a cure for it whilst for us like we would know the cure for like those rare diseases like Crohn's disease for example mm -hmm. and like rare blood cancers a lot of stem cells are being used to try and find a cure for it. So following up on that do you get to work with doctors in terms of your research because like you mentioned there might be things that you know that maybe they're not quite working on or do you get to know like maybe how to work with them in the future? Um, so in my course itself I didn't get that much of an opportunity to do that mm -hmm. but I did we did have like a module where we had stem cells and regenerative therapies mm -hmm. where we actually had medical students with us like mm -hmm. studying about it um, but outside of it, I actually went to King's College Hospital um, and I volunteered there like when I was in secondary school, but I went there again. Um, and when I was working there, I used to volunteer in the hematology department. So I asked one of the managers I work with that I'm still in contact with, she, and she said like to come and she will try and find someone like to talk to me. And so we went to the department and there was like a stem cell department for blood cancer. Ooh. So I got to meet the doctors there and was just doing like a sort of shadowing experience and then um, using stem cells to see if it's made a difference on blood cancer pa um, patients. So it's quite amazing to see like how now stem cells is becoming more popular because I feel like back then mm. it just wasn't you know talked about and especially with cancer itself people go through chemotherapy and it doesn't you know work out and I feel like stem cells will be like the next big thing. In cancer. Yeah. I think it's really cool like even like Mitch mentioned with like how it's becoming more popular now, mm -hmm. but also just like seeing that you yourself are taking the initiative to really get put yourself out there yeah. and learn a little bit more. So exactly. highly yeah. recommend it <laughs> to all exactly. the other women. So <laughs> put yourself out there, take the initiative. You heard it here first. Um, can I ask what was your research thesis focused on for your masters? So right now it's very early stages. So mm -hmm. I'm still researching into it, but we need to make a novel stem cell technology um, mm -hmm. for a rare disease. And so we basically need to pitch it to our professors who will be like our investors and just like, you know, sell it to them. So it's just based off that. Um, so it's very early stages right now because we're still like choosing which um, disease that we want to do and the type of stem cell that we want to um, focus on. Um, but it's quite it's quite hard because we now have to think in a more business mindset rather mm -hmm. than a science mindset. So we need to make sure like licensing, making sure like who we can collaborate with that could, you know, give us some money to, you know, you know, launch the product, for example, like the whole manufacturing cost. So there's like a lot more that we need to think about. So the aim of it is just for us to, you know, sort of think as if we're like a businessman or a businesswoman. Yeah. So I think earlier we mentioned that um, stem cells and like the fact like tissue engineering isn't delved deep enough into during like yeah. high school in biology. So I guess what would be your opinion in terms of how to get students more involved and like how can we 
start bringing it up more in those classes. Yeah, I think there should be more like hands-on experience as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's the main thing, especially with sciences. I think lab experience is very much needed. Mm -hmm. And especially at my time, it was very difficult to get lab experience. Mm -hmm. And obviously during COVID as well, like, everything was down. locked down. <laughs> <laughs> locked down. And, um, and even like in uni, like, I didn't actually do anything specifically to do with like stem cell mm -hmm. research. And I feel like they should have that in biology mm -hmm. as well, because I feel like they put that more for biomedical students or cancer students. But for biology itself, I feel like it should be like, included. Um, but yeah, I think for high schools, they should also have like, in the curriculum some sort of like, lab experience or bringing someone in yeah, and talking about it. Because, um, you know, maybe teachers don't have as much knowledge. So if they bring like, someone who's you know, got expertise in it, then um, it would be good to you know, share that to the students. But, yeah. I think that really worked well for me in high school as well when they brought in somebody else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I could listen to them and, you know. Yeah, because I remember when good. I mentioned about Dr. Emily Grossman when I went mm. to see her, like that was actually an extra thing. Like the teachers just told us, oh, there's a talk going if you guys want to go. And I remember it was just me and mm. I think another person from school in my whole, my whole, like my oh, school. Wow. And I saw other students as well, but from different ones. But it wasn't like a big group. It was just like mm. maybe like a good 10, 20. Kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, a good 10, 20. And I was just there like listening to this, like this is like, mm the future and I feel like more people should you know hear about it so yeah it should so be again taking the initiative <laughs> <laughs> that's what we've learned so far which is amazing so I guess speaking of taking the initiative can we talk a little bit about science and news yeah. <laughs> so would you mind just um explaining what it is I, I did try in the beginning <laughs> you said it perfectly <laughs> it would be better if you explain what is science and news and then yeah. what really motivated you to start it yeah um so science and news is a website where we have free articles and resources um and it's basically for the whole STEM community. Like anyone can just read it. And we just cut down like complicated topics into a much, you know, understanding manner. But anyone outside of STEM can just read it for, for fun, you know. <laughs> um, and we also have like free resources to help students for A-levels and IB and GCSE as well. Um, and the main like spark for that was during final year, we had a module called Project Skills. And we had some tasks where we had to do a lay summary, which is try to break down complicated topics into an understanding manner. So they gave like a whole list of like topics and research papers and we had to like choose a research paper and article and then write it into a summary. Oh, wow. And so when I was just like looking at all the topics, like the topic seemed so interesting, you know, mm -hmm. and like trying to like put that in a way that everyone could understand. I was like, that's like a good, I think that's a good like technique as well for oh, yeah, people definitely. for like to revise. Um, so that was sort of an idea that came to me I was just thinking like there should be a site where we should have articles like that because when we were in school GCSE and A level IB we'd have I don't know if you've used BBC Bite Size yep. or yeah that, that came in clutch yeah time. that <laughs> that BBC Bite Size or textbooks they're all like cut down right to information that we understand like yeah. when we come home um but I feel like when we come into university all we have to do is read like yeah. so Long many articles. papers especially <laughs> sciences like 20 30 pages yeah. um, even for me like I can't yeah, I'll be just highlighting <laughs> everything. <laughs> I'm not even taking all the important information. I'm just highlighting everything. Um, and it's so hard for me, especially like note taking. Like I don't know which information I need to take or that's important, yeah, sure. right? So that was another thing that sort of sparked it because I was like, for university, I feel like there should be some sort of website as well for university students to try and get information quickly. Yeah. So all of that together made me think, you know, we should have a website. So... And to be honest, I had no sort of like background or knowledge. Like, how do I start a website? <laughs> Who do I like, you know? So then I spoke to one of my friends that I knew back in primary school mm. and sort of just gave her the idea. And I just spoke to a couple of friends like, oh, I just have this idea, but I don't know if I'm actually going to do it. Um, and then my friend said like, you know, I think you should do it. So then from there, we, me and her, we sort of worked together and sort of designed the website. It was terrible. <laughs> Looking at it at the beginning, it was just brown. It was the first one. It was, <laughs> it was, the first first one. One. It was just brown. I had, I literally like whipped up a random logo within like 30, 40 minutes. So like the logo is completely different to what it is now. Mm. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I just wanted something on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's like grown into something massive, which I did not expect. So, yeah, yeah. It's really, really cool. So speaking of just like, it growing into something massive. So you mm -hmm. also now have volunteers that are able to work with you. They're really building like this community around yeah. it, which is so cool. Can yeah. you talk about, about that as well? Yeah, so obviously like when I started, I just mentioned it to a couple of friends about my website. And if, you want to inter if you're interested in writing, you can. Um, but I mainly like started posting it on LinkedIn. Um, and obviously now you can like do job posts. So I was thinking, you know, let's just try it on there. And I think at the beginning, it was very hard to like find people because mm. obviously it's like a completely new project. Yeah. So people are just going to be looking at it like, uh, do I trust this? Like, is it a good opportunity? 
So at the beginning, it was quite hard. I think we only had maybe five or six mm. volunteers, so like five writers, and then just me and my friend doing the website. Um, and now it's turned into like like 65, 66 Whoa, of us. That's so, so many people. Yeah, I'm just like completely <laughs> yeah. shocked. And some of them were from Queen Mary. So I think like probably, you know, people talking about it. So I even had like a person message me being like, oh, I heard it from like someone from Queen Mary about your website. Like, can I volunteer? So it's quite crazy. Like people like hearing it from people and just talking about it. And then, you know, you know, reaching out to me being like, oh, do you have this opportunity? Um, and stuff like that. And so now like the project's so big and we have so many people. Um, some of the volunteers that I have, they're now, I've given them role as like a subject manager. So oh. like biology content manager, chemistry content manager. So that is sort of, you know, building up to big things and letting them also, you know, take the opportunity to lead mm. a group of people. And it's good to add to your, you know, CV, <laughs> like personal skills, like everything. So yeah. It's fun. That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Um, so what has it been like, I guess, for you building that community and like really, I guess, linking all of us little STEM people together? Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> How has that been like? Um, yeah, generally, like, I still process, like, I'm talking to, like, connecting this many students yeah. together. Um, and, like, for example, the, the International Women's Project that we did, um, I think that was quite an emotional moment for me doing that because, you know, I was trying to get some girls in my website, um, the volunteers, you know, to write about themselves. Um, and a lot of them are from underrepresented backgrounds. And so them talking about their passion like for STEM and like them being like a woman in STEM, which is a big thing. Um, and like, you know, with you talking about, you know, biomedical engineering, women in biomedical engineering, that, that sort of thing. And connecting everyone into like a big community and inspiring others. I think that's like my main thing, like inspiring other people and especially from ethnic like backgrounds as well in STEM. Um, so yeah, like just having that many people like under me, like is such like a big thing. Um, and yeah, I just, yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> You're basically like a role model. Well, not basically, you are. <laughs> you are a role model now for other young women in STEM, especially that are coming up, like you said, from ethnic backgrounds. It's, yeah. it's so lovely to see. And like, especially with the actual topics itself, like writing it, um, especially when they're writing about something that they're very, very passionate about and they reach out to me being like, you know, thank you for letting me, you know, because... I feel like a lot of, especially in journalism and scientific communication, I think they're very like specific. Like companies are quite specific. Like you want, they want you to write it in a specific way. Whilst for me, I want them to write it in their way, like how they write it, but also like for everyone to understand. Um, and so, for example, I had a volunteer who wrote about a type of cancer, and she even reached out to me saying, like, you know, thank you for letting me write about it because one of her family members had that you know type of cancer and she said like she felt like it was nice to write a topic about that so more people know about it so it's all these small things you know other people can like connect to it um yeah I think I think there was another one where I did it on prostate cancer and it was another type of cancer that I'd done and I even had people messaging on LinkedIn being like oh I had a family member who had this you know thank you for like talking about it um and also, we also have maths and economics, which is another section we have. And even that, like, people wouldn't expect you to write articles on it. But we've had, like, people write, you know, articles on it, and it's done very well. So it's quite nice that it's, you know, growing. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice because you're, you're giving people an outlet as well. Bringing in, like, the different volunteers that you have, you mentioned that it's not only, like, for example, when you did the International Women's Month, it's not just breaking down scientific articles, but you're also giving them an outlet to be, I guess vulnerable really like yeah. kind of show what they're passionate about and maybe family members as well yeah, yeah have there been any challenges maybe not around that topic but just like with bringing in scientific news have you mentioned any challenges that you've um, maybe overcome i think obviously at the beginning actually you know launching that project mm. was obviously a big thing like what website you know designer i should use and things like that, especially with no sort of knowledge behind it um and that time, like, I didn't have, like, obviously I had my friend there, but, like, I didn't have much support around that. So me doing it on my own, like, working day and night to think about, like, how am I going to launch the project? And then, obviously, in terms of actually getting volunteers, like, where am I going to find them? Um, so obviously opening on social pages was, like, a big thing as well. Um, and I think, obviously, at the beginning, like, the difficulty we had was obviously having, like, volunteers that would, who were actually interested in, you yeah. know, doing it. Because <laughs> um, they would, like, apply and be like, yes. And then, like, we email back, we're like, are you ready? And they're like, no. <laughs> or, like, oh, they found another opportunity. Or they would say, oh, we thought this was, like, a paid job. And so, and, like, to me, that's not... Uh, obviously, like, we put this as a volunteer opportunity. Yeah, say, like, volunteer but paid. it's sad to see, like, for some people, like, they just want it because they want to add it on their CV mm -hmm. or, you know. 
And it's not just that. I, the reason I've also launched this is because I want to give opportunities for people. Because, for example, like in general, applying for jobs is like such a draining process, and it's hard. Like some people are, like amazing, and they get rejected and things like that. And it's obviously hard to see that. Not, even for us, obviously, we work into like choosing who's actually really, really good for it. But at the same time, we don't want to be too strict on that. We want to let people like you know, you know, sort of flourish <laughs> and give the opportunity, which is my you know main thing. Um, See, so yeah, I think that was the struggle, just finding the right people. I think that was the main thing. But right now, like the managers that I have, they're generally amazing. And my friend Manisha, um, who's the managing director, she's also amazing behind the scenes. Um, but I think the main thing you need is people that who support your project and your values, like in general. And they just they'll just be there for you, like no matter what. I think like that's like the main important thing but yeah totally good. yeah <laughs> the right people really make yeah a difference. exactly it's the Absolutely. right people because if it's people that are you know not going to be supportive about it it's just going to drain you and you just you're just going to give up on it so you just need the right people behind you so science and news with obviously one of like your wonderful achievements so far but it's also made you into a role model for young women in stem and i saw that you recently got recognized by the mets <laughs> uh, you did an article with them would you mind talking about what it's been like not only being recognized by a, I guess it's like a journal but also to know that you're now like officially officially yeah. a role model for young women in STEM um, yeah I was like first completely shocked like you know they have reached out and asked can you write an article like, I didn't even know they had like a section with um, about you know inspiring women and it's an amazing website an amazing organization and I'm I was inspired by one of the co-founders, um, Dr. A. Marie. And yeah, so when they reached out and said, you know, write an article about science here, it was like a big thing. So when I saw the website itself, there's so many like like popular, like inspiring women like back in the days. Yeah. Um, and so for, you know, me to write an article about this massive project that I have, like I didn't expect it. Um, so I'm like still like I only like it only came up like last week yeah. and I'm sort of still like processing it and it to see like especially as a Tamil woman I think that's another main thing especially as an Elan Tamil woman um, I'm probably like one of the first ones on there and I felt like representation for me is very very important because I felt like for me I'm, I didn't have anyone like a role model like someone who's Tamil or South Asian that I was inspired by and I felt like if I had that that would have been amazing so I feel like for, for me to be on the website and maybe younger you know, Tamil women or South Asian women seeing that, mm. like for them, they would be inspired by it. No, you are that. Now. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> Must be amazing. Too. Um, and yeah, being like one of the younger ones as well. Mm. Like a lot of them are much, you know, older. Like they've completed their PhD or already like the founders of a, you know, a massive company, CEOs, sort of thing. So it's like crazy to be on like that same, you know, area. Mm. Um, so one of the other things that the article mentioned was just um, a little bit about you dealing with things like imposter syndrome, which I feel like is a big thing for us as women in the STEM industry. Yeah. It's like most of us experience it at least once. So yeah. what has that been like for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I've had like a lot of hurdles with like in general as well. Like I felt like even before I'd started Scientia, I always felt like I wasn't happy with myself. Like I felt like I had to do more. Um um, and I felt like I had to push myself. And I felt like I've grown much more as a person compared to who I was, like, in, like, undergrad. Um, but, yeah, it's always that fear of, like, fa failure. Like, that's my main sort of issue that I have. And always feel like I'm not done enough. Um, and I think the, one of the main things is because, like, for example, my parents, they've, they've come from, they came from Sri Lanka due to the war. And they had to start their life from scratch here, right? And so... They didn't like know English, like they didn't know anything, and they had to like sort of build their whole life again, like from all of that. And so they had to, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, you know, try and like give like me and my brother, like, you know, the best possible life here. So, because of like that amount of work they've given us, and you know, they expect us obviously to do well in life. So, that's sort of like things like in my mind, like, I have to make sure, you know, I make them proud. So, that's like that sort of fear of failure is like always like in my mind, you know. Um, yeah, I think overcoming it, it's, it's still like a hard journey. Like for some reason, for some people, it's not that easy, you know, to have that sort of positive <laughs> self-talk, you know. Um, but sometimes I just try and think like how much, like how much I've grown and, you know, I've overcome all of that and like things will get better. I just need to have a bit of a more like stronger, you know, mindset. 
But I just tell myself that I should be proud with how far I've come, like, in this process. So, yeah. You definitely should. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <Until it's true. laughs> just based on that, so you did mention it briefly, but if you wouldn't mind giving just some advice to other young women that might be struggling with feelings of maybe imposter syndrome or, like, mm-hmm. they are not doing enough, like, what advice would you give to them? Um... I just feel like, obviously, they always say there's always, like, a positive light at the end of the tunnel. And I think that is true. And you should just believe in yourself. Because if you just put that negative self-talk on you, you feel like you're not going to go anywhere. You're still going to be stuck in that same position. And I know there's going to be, like, blips along the way, like, rejections and stuff. But they always say, like, rejection is always a redirection, right? And there will be, like, a better opportunity for you, like, somewhere. And, like, even for me, when um, applying for jobs, internships, like, it never went my way. And I felt like... I kept telling myself, well, I wish I'd applied to this, I wish I'd applied to that and tried a bit more. But then all of that sort of combined as well to make me then think about, let me start my own project, you know, and help other people. And so for it to become like such a, like, a big project that I didn't even think like nearly, now it's like a year, a year and a bit now since I launched it. Now thinking about it, like back then, I wouldn't even think like, oh my gosh, it would grow this big now. So yeah, I just feel like just keep believing in yourself and you know, the right thing will come to you. You just need to keep working hard and just not give up. Like, if you have the determination and you've got the passion for it, then just go with it. Just don't let other people, you know, mess that up in your head. Like, if you think you can do it, you should just do it. That's what I think. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Just any last advice for students that are maybe interested in something that maybe their biology teacher isn't going forth on or just, like, their teacher isn't, like, expanding on it as much as they would like, Mm -hmm. for example? Yeah biology (laughs) generative therapy yeah what advice would you have for those students that maybe think well my teacher hasn't gone that far into it maybe I should just pause Mm -hmm. like how well how would you I guess motivate them to find their own path and really just study what they're after yeah I think um obviously I think now is going to be much popular in terms Mm -hmm. of stem cell regenerative therapies but if like yeah if you still feel like if students still feel like oh it's too brief I want to know more then obviously like you should do your own research at home like that's what I did like as soon as I heard about it I just went home and was like let me type it up and like read all about it sort of thing um so just research it online and just finding there's like there's like so many talks now that goes on about stem cells like just finding those opportunities there's like so many free you know events that you can go to um and it's also good to you know just gain new knowledge like outside of what you're doing just go out there and just, you know, do it for your own thing, like not for your, just for your study. Like if you're actually interested, just go. Um, but yeah, I think the main thing is like going to talks. Like I'm so glad I went to those talks back in high school because I don't think if I didn't, then again, I probably wouldn't have known that much knowledge into like stem cells. Um, and hopefully, I mean, I hope there's like obviously opportunities out there like to do lab work in stem cells as well. That's also another big thing. Um, hands-on experience is really important. Um yeah, I think it's just mainly just doing your own research and just finding opportunities out there. There's so many like opportunities right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank your time. You. I really enjoyed talking to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi again, awesome listener. That wraps up another deep dive of Cameron's lab, Dive In. Before you dive back into your day, see what I did there? Take a second to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Want a behind the scenes look? Bonus content? Or just some good old STEM fun? Follow me on my socials. Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Cameron's Lab. And remember, every episode is a new adventure, and we've got some thrilling dives lined up for you. Don't miss out! Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.